we are gonna break a lot of cave related stuff and stuff that's never been related to caves. <laughs> We've got some uh, different in joining knots that we're gonna test. We also have a pit rope that is 40 years old and a new exact same version. And we're gonna test the two and compare them. And then we're gonna test to see if soft shackles have a place in caves because they have a place in my heart. I'm trying to get them into every other sport besides sailing where they came from. I am Ryan Jinks and welcome to the Slack Snap Lab where we are gonna break test a variety of caving things for all you caving people out there. John Fiorni from Cave Exploration Society sent us some ropes where he joined two ends together. And that is something we're gonna test to see if the Zeppelin knot or the modified Zeppelin knot is super good enough. So the Slack Snap machine is a giant rectangle with a hydraulic held back by a slack line and held forward by paracord because I think that's funny. Then we got our sexy lab area, our fancy camera holder. Surprise, I used my phone to film everything and some dynamometers. So let's see what this Zeppelin bin number one does. Twenty point two six, and that side looks okay, and that is where it broke, and that is the inside of ropes. In case you were wondering, what on earth happened <laughs> wow that is not a straight rope anymore interesting how different that was it's a four kilonewton difference now for the modified zeppelin bend which either looks like a bite is used to make the zeppelin bend so you could either clip to it or you could tie in the end of one rope to the middle of the other not quite sure put in the comments below that's where i learn a lot of stuff Let's break it. Twenty two point three eight and a whole lot of creaking like my knees after I go caving. <laughs> all right, so these are all the fluffy fibers ropes inside of ropes. Cause that's what it's supposed to look like. Oh wow, it broke in the knot. Oh wow, it's scrunchied again. So the conclusion is, you're fine. These broke super good enough considering you're putting about one tenth of the force when you're repelling or ascending the rope. So, so our next test is to test an 11 millimeter pit rope and one is brand new and one is 40 years old. And I bet you can't tell the difference. <laughs> Donated by some big name professional pit bouncers. <laughs> Ethan and Ian Reuter donated these. They had a spool of 11 millimeter pit rope they cut this off of and they had pulled this out of a cave that was in there this rope was in there for 40 years this is super interesting how supple this rope is it actually feels like a really nice like 9.4 millimeter rope that i would use climbing and this thing feels like a cable and uh we're gonna test the two to find out if 40 years without UV light affects a rope. Because I don't know if it does. Walter Siebert does a lot of testing based on UV light and whether or not we should be throwing perfectly good stuff away after 10 years just because it's sat in a closet. 
UV light is the thing that really kind of degrades ropes and harnesses, and it seems kind of wasteful to just throw things away that might be perfectly good. I'll link his channel in the description below because he literally got a doctorate in the topic. Before we get started, here is a fun fact. This is about 11.5. The tension part of the rope is anywhere from 11 and a quarter to 11. But when it's not tension, it's, it's a lot thicker, or at least on the calipers. Well, that is violent. And that is what 11 millimeter pit rope looks like. And that's pretty stiff. Broken the knot. Wow. That was stiff before I made it tight. How many ropes can you do that with? <laughs> can you see the dust floating through the air? <laughs> it's not as dirty as the other cave rope we tested. Um, ooh, it's kind of stinky. That is an old rope. That rope is older than me. I'd still use it, but that's half as strong. So I was wrong. Not the first time. Not even the first time today. This broke half of what the new one broke at. Now, you can see in the other video we did where we measure the force of when you're repelling and ascending, and different people with different weights or different methods might produce a different uh, force, but let's say it's double of what we got in the other video. Still got technically a three to one safety ratio in like the worst case scenario, as long as you're not shock loading things. And if you put 12 kilonewtons on your body, you might want it to break. But I was under the impression that without UV light and excessive ascenders, that a rope does not degrade. Who knew? <laughs> Maybe we should replace ropes every once in a while. Put in the comments below what you think. Just the idea is, if there's been no chemicals, no use, and no UV light, it's been in a closet, is it really that big of a deal? This is, uh, they washed this before they sent it. I mean, had mud rubbed in it for 40 years? I don't know, that might have had something to do with it. Or it could have been their carbide lights or the chemicals in the wash. It could have been multiple things. It could have been the FedEx box shook it too much. Who knows? Let's move on to something that really is controversial. In order to save very little weight, you could possibly use soft shackles in a cave. John Fiorni put these together and we're gonna test them. They have thimbles around the hanger, so it has a nice bend radius for the amp seal. If you've never seen this, we have a like an entire playlist about Dyneema. Basically, these are soft shackles, that's a button knot. And in this case, the eye is below the thimble and you put the button knot in there and it cinches down. And no, you're never gonna get that button knot out if even there's just this much pressure on it. So if you are going up or whatever, this is not gonna come undone. We've done lots of, enough tests to know that's fine. Uh, another thing you could do is just tape it shut or thread something in there. The idea is that you can take this on your expeditions already pre-assembled onto the hangers and you would fix your ropes through the soft shackle. And this is rope on rope abrasion. However, the rope's not moving enough on this rope to possibly cut through it. This has the same coefficient as Teflon, 0.04, I believe. So it's pretty slippery stuff. It's pretty hard to cut through, especially something this thick. I'm not worried about this being strong enough. The idea is that you don't have to take this. Compared to this, this is lighter. However, this is not universally known or understood. So if somebody who's never seen a soft shackle in their life before goes up and they're hours underneath the ground and they're going, what the heck? So the fact that this is not common knowledge might be a concern. So we're going to pull test this with the rope installed to find out if the rope fails before the soft shackle. We have some skinny stuff here, and we also have a thicker version. And I actually kind of like this thicker version. The fact that it doesn't weigh or even cost hardly any more than the skinnier one makes me feel better. So 
Before we test this, let's find out how much of a difference this is. 2.4 for the bigger one, 2.1 for the smaller one, and the quick link normal version is 4.1. So about two ounces is not a huge difference, but if you took eight to 10 of them, you could save a pound. If you took a hundred of them on a huge expedition, you could save 10 to 12 pounds. Is that worth it? If you're taking that many for a huge expedition, it's like rigging a two mile long high line and trying to save 10 pounds using soft shackle instead of quick links, which I did for a while and realized how silly it was because the webbing's heavy. Anyways, let's find out if these are strong. All right, so you have your knot, and you got your fancy cave soft shackle. You go through the little eye right there at the base of the thimble, and let's pull on that. Okay, so the concern is that the thin bend radius might reduce the strength of this. But this broke first. The strength of a quick link is substantially higher. This is a bit too thin in my opinion. Okay, so the rope is fine. And this broke kind of where it was inside of itself and so the head came out. That is interesting. Uh, this thimble is very bent. Okay, so this is a soft shackle without a thimble. <laughs> That's 30% stronger. Hanger is getting flatter. And the soft shackle broke where it was touching the hanger because of that sharp bend radius. The interesting fact is this is two strands doubled. So that's four strands minus knot loss. So this is about 225% of the single strand MBS. However, this is kind of bottlenecks right there. And so you're not getting... 4x strength, you're getting 2x strength, uh, minus all these Brummel splices in here. So you're actually not getting the full soft shackle strength out of it. I think that's a big difference. So now let's try a bigger size and see kind of the results we get. Hmm, anybody want a scrunchie? That is a less round radius than it used to be. Okay, so this broke the crisscross applesauce that this was in, and this thimble is bent quite a bit. This one came off of the thimble. The hanger is looking pretty straight. I do think it's affecting that. We are pulling at forces you do not get when you're rappelling and ascending. Fun fact, we've been using the same rope on the same eight this whole time. So kudos to this rope. Uh, we're going to do another set of three with a different soft shackle. Oh, the rope broke. Technically first. This is not the first test this rope's been through. And this, folks, is what a thimble looks like after you stress it out. Mm. <laughs> Yee All right, so the rope did not break, but it's a close, it's a close one. I don't think I'm gonna get that off easily. So I appreciate John trying to be innovative, uh, but we're not quite there yet. And this is the process of innovation where a lot of ideas don't work that well. But we have some more ideas now that we've done a handful of these tests. What if you took the same skinny Amsteel 
And this is like nine kilonewtons strong, maybe. <laughs> what if you double wrap it? And this is something we're going to explore in highlining is double wrapping it directly into the hanger. So that sharp hanger isn't as much of a concern because there's more material here. This is eight X the strength of a single strand. We can possibly test this, but Bobby had a good thought. What if you use a hanger that isn't sharp? This is a Pingo hanger from Bonier in Brazil. And because it's got a nice bend radius, you can go with, let's say, a five or six millimeter soft shackle directly into this thing. And you probably preserve enough strength to break the hanger before the soft shackle. A soft shackle, a five millimeter will break around 50 kilonewtons and a six millimeter will break in the 60s. And so this isn't that strong. So if you got even 80 or 70% of the strength of the soft shackle, this would break first. But let's talk about the rope. Since our last test, we're breaking in that low 20s, high teen range. Technically, that's when the rope starts breaking. So we're not getting full strength out of the rope. And I want full strength out of the rope. I want the rope to be the weakest link um, next to my harness being the next weakest link. So I want our anchors to be bomber. And I think we can get bomber by just going directly in with even just a single or double of a soft shackle like this, if we're gonna try to do this method. And we're gonna find out how strong this is. And I have a feeling the rope is going to break first, which means we've achieved full strength. So I could not get a quick link to fit in the Pingo. So I put a fixed glue and bolt wrapped with a soft shackle, which is very creative. And I have the soft shackle attached directly, just a single wrap to the Pingo. Let's find out how strong this is. We have achieved success. The rope breaks first. That's the inside of this rope in case you find that interesting. The hanger is still super good enough. Soft shackle seems to be super good enough. Where the contact point, which is some people's concerns, seems to be super good enough since it is technically breaking in the knot. Let's uh, pull on this direct and see what happens. Wow. Okay, that's impressive. I don't know where the back of this hanger is. And the fact the back of the hanger blew off and we didn't resize the hole, which is why I had to get creative. This fuzziness on the soft shackle, I think is just the uh, splice coming out. That is pretty good for a 25 kilonewton hanger. Well, it already went up high once. Yeah, we already stressed it out. Go Pingo. I had a thought. Ryan said I had to share it on camera. If you have a hanger that's not compromising the rope, uh, why do you need an intermediate connection? Just tie directly into the hanger. That's too simple, Bobby. Then we can't use soft shackles. <laughs> I hate common sense. It takes all the fun out of things. Uh, another great hanger is the Dupla Bonier hanger because it has an even larger bend radius. And so this is actually just simpler, less bulky, and you don't have to create these uh, interesting soft shackles that are embedded into the hangers, which apparently can take a while. So... Just having the right hardware could save a lot of time. I don't feel like we need to break test a quick link because it's gonna be stronger than the rope, stronger than the hanger. They're really, really strong, like 40, 50, 60 kilonewtons. So stainless steel if you're in caves, uh, stainless steel if you're anywhere really outside, and you're super good enough. This is possibly the lightweight solution or the Pingo rather than a fancy soft shackle, which breaks my heart because I love forcing soft shackles in places they shouldn't be. So Zeppelin or modified Zeppelin knots are bomber. Old ropes are not necessarily gonna kill you, but probably should be replaced. And soft shackles still need a little bit more creativity to find out where they're actually useful in a cave.